Today marks one year since the Eastland Complex fire broke out. A series of fires, really, that went on to claim over 50,000 acres and one life. KTAB's Noel McKinney gives us a look back on the fight to contain the destruction and a glimpse of the rebirth happening in the communities that took the brunt of its force. Tonight's top story. As soon as you're ready, you go right ahead. <laughs> It was huge. It, it was coming right at us. All you could see was the smoke and flames, and we barely got out. I told my wife, grab what you can, and we got to go. She grabbed her medication, some of her jewelry, and I grabbed a, one of my banjos and a fiddle, and we left. Carbon resident Leo Gillentine lost his home in the Eastland Complex fire one year ago. This handmade fiddle is one of the only possessions he was able to save from the destruction. It was devastating to say the least. Mere days after the Walling fire was quelled, what would come to be known as the Eastland Complex fire was just sparking up in the rural communities of Carbon and Gorman. The fires were almost impossible to fight, so getting people out of the line of fire was probably the highest priority. Cisco Fire Chief Walter Fairbank says this fight was unique, not in the fire's origin, but the sheer magnitude of its size. And another one breaks out, and then another one breaks out, and another one breaks out. So that game plan you originally had just kind of goes out the window. Six separate wildfires claimed over 50,000 acres of land. Mutual aid from all surrounding big country fire departments, Dias Air Force Base, and several out-of-state departments struggling to contain the destruction. It's overwhelming at first, and then there's eventually you get that feeling of Man, there's just nothing we can do. We just got to get these people out of the way. Some moving away and some staying to sift through the ashes. But the greatest loss by far was that of Eastland County Deputy Sergeant Barbara Finley. It's heartbreaking because she was trying to help everyone. She laid down her life while helping with evacuations for our friends in Carbon. And there was no greater love that she could have given than that. Hundreds from around the state coming to show their support for the fallen hero. Rest high. Your brothers and sisters have it End of watch, March 17, 2022. Her life, one loss too many, and now in her memory, a community rebuilds. I noticed them coming back about three months ago. I saw others moving in, rebuilding. A dream for the future, marked still by the devastation of the past. I think we'll make it. I think Carbon will make it. For BigCountryHomePage.com, I'm Noah McKinney. Thank you, Noah. While many folks have been able to rebuild, some are still struggling to shoulder the cost of such a large loss. One pastor in Carbon telling Noah that even those who are offering all their help they can to their neighbors, they're facing fees they just cannot overcome even one year out.